Starting us off at number 10 is the Devil's Bible, also known as the Codex Gigas. Back in the 13th century, there was a monk who was sentenced to be walled up alive because he broke his sacred vows. Obviously, this guy wasn't a fan of dying, so what did he do? He promised the monastery that if they let him live, he would write a book that would contain all human knowledge in a day. Yikes. That might be worse than death. In order to fulfill his promise, he sold his soul to the devil himself. Supposedly, this devil's Bible contained a complete Latin translation of the Bible and multiple other texts, such as medical formulas and even instructions for performing exorcisms. This book was created using more than 160 animal skins and apparently takes two people just to lift it. Although, Mysteriously, this book became a bit lighter because 12 pages are actually missing. Rumor has it, these pages contain satanic rituals to summon the devil himself. Of course, there is no way in knowing unless we read it for ourselves, so if any of you hardcore readers out there get a chance to take a peek, let me know in the comments. In our ninth spot today, we have the missing leg. On April 19th, 1995, at 9.02 a.m., a bomb was detonated inside of a truck by a federal building in Oklahoma City. Sadly, 168 people lost their lives as a result of this attack. Now, while investigators were working on this case, they came across a detached leg in a military boot. They originally thought that the leg belonged to one of the victims, Lakeisha Levy. However, she was buried with both her legs, so it couldn't have been hers. In fact, her body was actually exhumed and analyzed. But because her body was embalmed, taking DNA tests from the leg she was originally buried with wasn't possible. So it's not known whose leg this belongs to. Was it Lakeisha's leg? If so, then who does the leg that she was buried with belong to? Investigators either think it's another victim or an additional terrorist. But to this day, nothing has been confirmed. In our eighth spot, we have the Copper Scroll Treasure. In 1952, a copper scroll was found alongside other Dead Sea Scrolls in a cave. Now, this scroll was quite interesting. As its name suggests, the writing was engraved onto a copper scroll. When translated, it apparently talks about a bunch of hidden treasure. Now, this scroll is over 1900 years old. During that time, the Romans might have been out to capture the treasure, so they hid it in order to prevent them from finding it. So maybe this scroll is a key in finding the treasure. The question is, is the treasure real? Will we ever find it? And if it is real, then where is it hidden? In at number seven, we have the human feet. Since 2007, around 20 dismembered human feet have washed up on the coast of Salish Sea in British Columbia, Canada. What's weird is that the feet are often found still perfectly inside of their laced shoes, and investigators still don't know what to think. A couple of the feet have been identified, like one belonged to a missing male, one belonged to a missing fisherman, the other belonged to a woman that jumped off of a bridge. So it's believed that these feet belong to victims of terrible accidents or belong to people who took their own life. It's still very strange, like why have so many feet washed up in the same area? Now, police ruled out foul play, but some people believe that these people were gang members or victims of sacrifice. In our sixth spot, we have the farm murders. On March 31st of 1922, six family members were killed with a pick's axe on a farm. What's weird is that the murderer lived on the farm for six days after taking the lives of the family. The killer was taking care of the cattle and using their kitchen to cook meals for themselves. When police did find the bodies, the killer killer had already fled. Now, what makes this case scary and more chilling is that a previous maid said that she'd recently quit because she thought that the house was haunted. She heard voices and footsteps coming from the attic. So police think that the killer was living in the attic for quite some time before committing these crimes. To this day, the murderer has never been found. The files were sealed in 1955 and the house was eventually demolished. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Big Grey Man. The Big Grey Man is said to be a cryptid that haunts the summit of Ben MacDewey, located in Scotland. Some people think that it's just a legend, whereas other people have actually seen this creature. It's said to be an extremely tall human-like creature, being over 10 feet tall with short hair and broad shoulders with long arms. Needless to say, you don't want to encounter him. 
But like I said, there's been so many eyewitness reports that many think this beast is indeed real. To this day, scientists still haven't been able to come up with an explanation for the sightings. In our fourth spot, we have the Oak Island Mystery. The Oak Island Mystery is a 200-year-old legend that insists that pirate treasure is buried on Oak Island in Nova Scotia. Multiple attempts have been made to discover this treasure, however, none have been successful. In fact, several people have died trying to unearth this mystery. People believe that the treasure contains William Shakespeare's original manuscripts, Marie Antoinette's jewels, and other artifacts worth millions of dollars. Named the Money Pit, the supposed spot for the treasure is over 200 feet deep and is filled with booby traps to prevent anyone from reaching the treasure. The question is, is this legend true and will we ever unearth some treasure? Cause so far, nothing has been found on Oak Island. In our third spot today, we have the Bigfoot. For sure, you have all seen that infamous blurry photo of the Bigfoot, you know, walking, but is he actually real? Well, over the years, there have been a number of credible sightings of this beast, leading many to believe that he is indeed real. Take Michael Green, for example. He is a former US Army tank commander and fraud investigator who ended up encountering Bigfoot. Why would someone of that rank lie about Bigfoot? During a camping trip in a North Carolina forest, he claims he encountered this beast. He said that he woke up in the middle of the night to the sound of something approaching his tent. Soon, it was directly over his tent and let out a deafening roar that I quote, scared the devil out of him. He claims that this beast was about seven and a half or eight feet tall and striding with ponderous arm swings. He truly believes that this was Bigfoot. So could it be that the Bigfoot is indeed real? Let me know what you think. In our second spot, we have the woman who named her killer. Now this case is the definition of bizarre. Now this case has been solved, but how it was solved still remains a complete mystery. Let me explain. So in 1977, a woman named Teresita Bassa was murdered and her jewelry was stolen. Police tried finding the perpetrator and the jewelry, but it was unsuccessful. That was until Bassa's co-worker, Remy Cho, got in contact with her ghost. So Remy hardly knew her, okay? Then she just randomly started having visions about her. She kept seeing this man's face behind Bassa. So she decided to try and actually contact her from the dead. She sat down with her husband and actually channeled her spirit. She took control of Remy's body and told her husband the entire story of her murder. It was done by a man named Alan Showery. The two went to the police with this information and they investigated Alan and he was arrested for the crime. Isn't that wild? Like literally she got in contact with her spirit and the spirit told her how to die. Like this whole story is just one big mystery. And in her number one spot today, we have the Dyatlov Pass incident. Now this is one case that keeps me up at night. So in February of 1959, a group of nine experienced hikers set out to travel the snowy mountains of Siberia. However, they all ended up mysteriously dying one by one. So during the night, something caused them to cut their way out of their tent and flee the campsite. The hikers were not properly dressed. Some were even found completely naked. Some had died from hypothermia, others were killed by physical trauma, and it was very gruesome. What, so what happened that night? Was it an animal attack? Military involvement? Infrared sound induced panic? These are all some of the wild theories out there. But to this day, we still don't know the truth behind this incident. Starting off this countdown, we have Cicada 3301. Now this is one of the most famous internet mysteries of all time. So it all started in 2012 when a mysterious organization, Cicada 3301, posted a weird message on 4chan. According to the message, there was a secret hidden within their posted image, and they were recruiting highly intelligent individuals to try and solve it. They said that solving this was would lead them on the road to finding them, and that they looked forward to meeting those that solved it. 
Well, it turns out that by opening the image file in a text editing app, a string of characters would appear. When decoded, it led users to a website with even more weird messages. Some say that they solved the mystery. Others say that those who completed the puzzle are recruited for something and are never heard from again. What are they recruited for though? That's what I would like to know. Coming in at number 9 is the Nazca Lines. Most of us have heard of crop circles before, but what about the Nazca Lines? The Nazca Lines, just like crop circles, are actually named geoglyphs. Now, what is a geoglyph? A geoglyph is a large design produced on the ground and usually formed by plastic rocks, stones, stone fragments, and gravel or earth. The Nazca Lines were first discovered in the 1930s when pilots were flying over the Nazca Desert in southern Peru and came across these massive drawings. The ancient Nazca civilization made up these drawings consisting of animals, humans, and plants around 2,000 years ago. There are said to be over 100 of these drawings spanning a total of 50 square kilometers. And while many can identify who and what created these massive drawings, no one alive actually knows the reason behind them. Scholars theorize that these were massive signs to give incoming sailors directions, or that they were a way to communicate with those above us. Dun dun dun! Here at number 8 we have the Roman dodecahedrons. All over the world for hundreds of years, random stone and bronze objects have been popping up in fields and sometimes even in people's yards. These objects are called the Roman dodecahedrons. These objects have 12 sides with a small circle on each and pegs sticking out of every single corner. Experts have dated these objects all the way back to the 2nd and 3rd centuries CE, but once again, they have no idea of their purpose. Many believe these objects resemble an ancient nautical devices, or were used to sow winter grains or even calibrate water pipes for Roman architects. In the end, all of these are just theories and cannot be told for sure. So maybe go and invest in a metal detector and see what you can find. At number 7 we have the King List. Dating all the way back to the 3rd millennium BCE, this giant slab known as the King List lists all of the Sumerian kings with their respective dynasties, locations, and the times they were in power. This may not seem like much of a mystery to you, but the mystery isn't the list of the Sumerian kings on the slab, but what is actually included in the list of kings. There are mythological events inscribed on the slab, as well as the events of the Great Flood and the Tales of Gilgamesh, meaning that the stories from the Old Testament could indeed be true and that the kings included on the list were actually gods or demigods. Hopefully all that power didn't go to their heads. At number 6 we have the Antikythera Mechanism. Back in 1900, a group of sponge divers discovered a shipwreck in the Mediterranean dating all the way back to 70 to 60 BCE. These divers salvaged three pieces of bronze making up what is now known as the Antikythera Mechanism. This shoebox sized artifact stunned scholars for over a century due to the fact that the object's gears and internal mechanisms were far beyond any of the known Greek tech of the time. Some even believe that this object is proof of ancient aliens' visitations to Earth. Although in the late 20th century, X-ray showed that the object is designed to track astronomical movements and was confirmed later by CT scans that revealed inscriptions for what was basically an ancient computer. While the object's use has now been confirmed, what is still puzzling is the advanced construction and precision of this tool that is believed to be way more advanced than what was available at the time. I don't know. If you ask me, I say aliens. At number 5 we have the stone spheres of Costa Rica. Ever since the 1940s, scientists have been digging up these ancient mysterious spheres in the Dicus Delta of Costa Rica. Originally discovered by agricultural forays by the United Fruit Company, small stone spheres ranging from a few centimeters wide to 2 meters in diameter and weighing over 16 tons have been popping up everywhere in the Dicus Delta. Every single one of these spheres is man-made and made up of an igneous stone known as granodiorite. Many of these stone spheres have been moved to high profile locations throughout Costa Rica and some are even now privately owned. Everyone seems to love them for their decoration, but the coolest thing about them is that absolutely no one knows why, how, or who made these strange objects. Hmm, seems to be a common theme, huh? At number 4 we have the bog bodies of northern Europe. Ever since the 18th century, hundreds and hundreds of well-preserved human bodies have been discovered in the peat bogs of northern Europe. Some of these bodies have been dated all the way back to 8000 BCE. Some of you may be familiar with the famous Toland Man, who was discovered back in 1950 by two Danish farmers in a small town in Denmark. The Toland Man is believed to be from the pre-Roman Iron Age of the 3rd century BCE. His body was so well preserved that scientists were able to look at the contents of his stomach to determine where he lived. Now I know what you're thinking, 
Dewey, this sounds amazingly gross and cool, but where's the mystery, my dude? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked. All of the bodies that have been found have no explanation as to why they were placed in the bogs, nor why this way of disposal would be utilized. There are only speculations that these people were either sacrifices or social outcasts who were fated to meet their doom. Wow. And I thought high school kids were mean. Coming in at number 3 is the underwater ruins of Japan. Just under the surface off the coast of Yonaguni Jima is Japan's very own Atlantis. First discovered back in 1995, divers and researchers believed the findings to be nothing more than just a series of weird rock formations that included straight lines and right angles. Later, there were searches that discovered a large stone gateway, carved stairways, and streets to huge vaulting towers. Many believe the underwater mystery to be the fallen city of the Jomon people. Experts believe that the city didn't fall into the sea like other fabled underwater cities, but actually slowly submerged over thousands of years. It is believed that this site could hold secrets and answers to all of the other theorized underwater cities around the world, such as Atlantis. Now, we could continue to theorize, or we could just believe that Aquaman starring Jason Momoa is actually a documentary and he currently does live in the ocean. I can see it. At number 2 we have the Piri Rice map. In 1929 this old map was found in the Sultan's palace in Istanbul, Turkey. A legendary commander of the Ottoman fleet by the name of Piri Reis, who lived from 1465 to 1553, is the author of the map. Reis's map is extremely precise. So precise that it actually includes the continent of Antarctica. But wait, hold the phone. Antarctica wasn't discovered until 1773 by British Captain James Cook, but yet? Here is Piri Reis's map showing Antarctica back in 1513. Was Antarctica actually just discovered much earlier than originally thought? Or did James Cook just take credit for someone else's hard work? We might never know. Finally, coming in at number one is the infamous Big Daddy Stonehenge. In case you've been living under a prehistoric rock for the last few thousand years, you've probably heard of Stonehenge. Stonehenge is a giant prehistoric monument that is located in England and dates back to 3000 BC. The monument consists of a ring of standing stones all weighing around 25 ton, originally from a quarry located 25 kilometers or 15.53 miles away from the current monument. Not one person knows how these ancient people could have moved these massive stones without the use of a wheel or pulley, or why they were even formed in the first place. Starting off this countdown, we have Jeanette De Palma. In 1972, a dog was out playing in the forest when it brought a decomposed forearm back to its owners. From there, the search was on for the missing person's body. Turns out that it belonged to a woman named Jeanette De Palmer. She was missing for six weeks, but eventually the rest of her body was found on top of a cliff. Now, what's weird is that the area surrounding her body was covered with occult symbols. Rumor has it that she was sacrificed by cult members or killed for pissing off Satan worshippers. But sadly, police couldn't determine the cause of death due to her badly decomposed body. So not only do we not know her cause of death, we also don't know why she was killed or by who. In our ninth spot, we have Heaven's Gate. This was a creepy and popular American religious cult on the internet that believed in UFOs. In 1997, police found 39 members of the cult dead inside of a house. Apparently, the members took their lives in order to ascend and board an extraterrestrial spacecraft and go to another planet. They were all found wearing arm patches that read Heaven's Gate Away Team. To this day, the website is still up and running, and no one knows who's running it. Now, in 2015, the administrators behind the website did do an email interview. In the interview, they called themselves TELA, which stands for the evolutionary level above humans. They claim that the dead members are actually alive and have transcended their human bodies and that they will come back eventually. To this day, their identity still remains unknown. In our eighth spot, we have Chip Chan. This is one internet mystery that has always left me unsettled. Chip Chan is the name given to a Korean woman that was discovered in a 4chan webcam thread in 2008. It immediately caught the attention of a number of people because the footage revealed this woman sleeping in unusual positions for long periods of time at unusual times of day. In fact, at first, people thought that she was dead. 
She also sleeps in weird positions like on a chair or on the floor. After doing further investigation, users found that this woman believes that a mind control weapon was implanted into her ankle bone and under her left eyebrow. This chip is said to control her and that's what's making her sleep all the time. She also claims that she is being held by a corrupt officer named P and that she installed these webcams into her home so that she can see what happens to her when she's sleeping. This story is just so freaking creepy and I don't think it's ever been solved. In our seventh spot today, we have Kanye Quest. Yeah, not Kanye West, Kanye Quest. Kanye Quest 3030 is an RPG game that was released in 2013. Now it seems just like a silly game. It centers around Kanye West, who on his way to take out trash, travels through a wormhole and into the future. He then has to take down an evil dictator. And you got Tupac, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre in it, and you can have a rap battle with them. Now the game seems pretty harmless. That was until a player found out the game's dark secret. At one point in the game, you can interact with a displayed message. It seems like gibberish at first, until people realized it said, ascend and worship the based god. Further on in the game, you are asked to enter a prompt, and you can type anything you want. But if you type ascend, the whole game changes and you're put in this secret area. Eventually, players got to a screen that congratulated them on being an open-minded and curious thinker. They then instructed the player to not tell anyone about what they found. It then asks if you wish to participate. If you click yes, then they give you instructions on an exercise that you need to complete. Furthermore, players discovered a QR code that led to a now defunct website. In the end, it was discovered that the game has been tied to the religious cult of ascensionism and to a mysterious company, Ascension Records. The true meaning of the secret of this game has remained unsolved to this day. Coming in at number six, we have Jack Frozy. Now there are a number of creepy pastas out there about someone dying and then their loved ones receive phone calls or Facebook messages or texts from the dead person. Well, this actually happened in real life. Jack Frozy was a 32 year old man from Dunmore, Pennsylvania. In June of 2011, he died suddenly and unexpectedly from a heart arrhythmia. Five months after Jack's death, his friend received an email from Jack's account with the subject line, I'm watching. Soon his family started getting emails from Jack as well. Now of course, they didn't believe it to be Jack for a second, but whoever it was, they knew intimate details regarding his friends and family, details only Jack would know. To this day, no one knows who sent these emails. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with GhostNet. This is the name given to a large scale cyber spying operation uncovered in 2009. In fact, it has been described as one of the most extensive operations ever uncovered. Yet, no one knows who was behind this operation. So in 2009, it was found that an organization infiltrated over 1,000 computers across 103 countries. They did this by sending emails with attachments or links to individuals or organizations. By opening the file, the user would unknowingly download a virus onto their computer that allowed the hackers to gain complete control of their computers so they could read and send data and even turn on someone's webcam and microphone. Like I said, no one knows who was behind this. But since the network originated in China, some believe that the Chinese government had something to do with this. Others believe that the CIA or the Russian government were behind this. In our fourth spot, we have the most mysterious song on the internet. This is the title given to a song with an unknown name, sung by an unknown artist with an unknown origin. It all started when a man named Darius came across an old cassette and liked a song on there and wanted to find the name of it. Him and his sister couldn't figure it out, so they turned to the internet for help. Soon, thousands of music enthusiasts came forward to try and figure out this song. To this day, no one has figured out who's behind this song, hence why it's given the name the most mysterious song on the internet. What's even weirder is when the song was shared online, a number of people recognized it. They said that they have heard it before, they just can't put their finger on it. In our third spot, we have Markovian Parallax Denigrate. This mystery started back in the 90s and revolves around a number of weird and confusing posts that appeared to be complete gibberish. Back then, there was something called Usenet, which was like a forum. On August 5th of 1996, hundreds of weird messages started appearing on Usenet. No one knew what they meant, but people knew that they were related because each post had one thing in common. 
The subject line read Markovian Parallax Denigrate. Turns out that these are secret codes, but no one has been able to crack them yet. In our second spot, we have Ted the Caver. Now, some say this is merely just a creepy pasta, whereas others believe it's a true story. I'll let you decide what you want to think. Back in February of 2000, a man known only by the name of Ted the Caver posted about exploring an unknown virgin cave passage in the US. According to Ted and his journal entries, when him and his friend entered the cave, they found a narrow passageway with a small hole. So they drilled the hole and decided to explore it further. But as they went to explore this cave, weird things began to happen. Him and his friend heard ghastly screaming, they found weird hieroglyphs on the cave walls, and apparently encountered evil spirits in the cave that followed them home. All of this was backed up with images of him and his friend exploring the cave. The last post was on May 19th, 2001, when Ted revisited the cave and said he would update everyone when he returned home. He never updated the post, making people believe that he never returned home. In fact, this mystery was so popular that a horror movie was made off of it. And in our number one spot today, we have the Lake City Quiet Pills. Now, this is another very weird and wild one. So it starts with the death of a Reddit user, Religion of Peace. He was a moderator for the subreddit Jailbait, which is disturbing on its own. But he mainly posted about his military experience and guns, and would encourage posts to get people to upload pictures on his website, LakeCityQuietPills.com. But as many investigated his site, they realized that hidden inside the site's HTML code was a motto. It said, and I quote, dispensing Lake City quiet pills to lousy bastards in need of permanent rest since 1968. It continued on saying, Shade is maintaining the calendar and access to the file dump. Angel has the job postings for EU and Asia. We aren't sending anyone to me, no one. Don't ask for listings. Then what followed were what appeared to be job listings. Here are some. Immediate need, eight to 10 Chinese Korean, fluent Korean dialect, accent details after contact 12 week half pay and they went on to say that they needed Arabic French people no papers no problems a lot of people then theorized that this site was used as a way to pass assassination jobs back and forth as people dug further they found a government-owned bullet factory in Missouri called Lake City ammunition plant meaning the quiet pills that they're referring to are bullets I mean yeah you get shot by one of those and you'll be quiet so maybe this website was a front for some illegal activity. 